Hi there, I'm Jim, the owner of Pure Wave Audio and the Studio Edge Pro Audio Recording Series. With 40 years of commercial sound engineering and mastering experience, plus a bachelor's in electrical engineering. I am dedicated to empowering professional and inspiring recording engineers. Stay tuned and let me guide you through the exciting world of pro audio recording. Today we are discussing mastering versus regular equalizers. From pricing a two-channel equalizer for a studio or mastering facility, you may notice there's a big difference in price between the models. There could be two units that look exactly the same, even by the same manufacturer, but with a $5,000 difference in the price tag. This more expensive model is typically the mastering EQ. Let me explain the difference in usage and options. A regular fully parametric equalizer is all you need for recording. Equalizers come with different specs and tolerances that you could choose to your liking. The better those specs, usually the more you pay. The more expensive models tend to have smoother action on all the knobs and controls because they are using more expensive components that will last longer and feel better. In a mastering EQ, all the controls are replaced with high tolerance detent controls. In other words, the dial clicks over to each setting. Each setting might only add 0.25 dB of change, but it is exactly 0.25 dB of change. The controls for the left and right channels are also matched for perfect symmetry. This way, when a mastering engineer wants to add 1 dB of 100 Hz on each side, he knows it is being replicated correctly on both channels and is just not an approximation. The detents allow for exact recall if he needs to recall a song later on. These high-end controls are very expensive and it's easy to put 30 controls in one unit. Some mastering EQs even take it to the next level by adding automated total recall. In this case, the digital circuitry added to the analog controls adds dollars to the price. It's not as expensive as high-end tolerance detent controls though. A push of a button recalls the whole equalizer to the memorized settings. When it comes to purchasing, if you plan on doing both recording and mastering, you could use a mastering EQ for both applications. But if you only plan to record, there's usually no need for the extra expense on the step controls. And if you're struggling in your recording endeavors, you probably need to really dig into the physics of sound, and you could learn this in detail with the Studio Edge Pro Audio Recording Series I created, specifically Volume 1, Studio Concepts, Gear, and the Physics of Sound. Now, no one is sponsoring this video. It is supported by those of you that have purchased my courses and purchased from purewaveaudio.com. Check the links in the description, and thanks for your support. Now let's take a look at some of the EQs you could find at Pure Wave Audio. Okay, so here we are on purewaveaudio.com, and if you come over to Recording, Signal Processors, we're gonna to go to equalizers first. Now, when you're in equalizers, your mastering and regular equalizers will be in there because they're all technically equalizers. And so I'm just gonna pop this from uh, ascending. And there's a bunch of different types of equalizers. We have modules, we have rack. Over here we have like a Pultec type EQ, which is passive. What's nice about these is you could actually boost and cut at the same frequency from different controls. That gives you kind of an interesting phase relationship on the EQ. Over here, we have kind of a bus EQ that has, it's more sculpting, if you will. Anything thermionic culture is actually a tube based. So you can see it says two channel valve equalizer. And with these, you can see that there's certain almost detente type knobs. You could only select certain frequencies. That doesn't necessarily mean it's mastering, but usually that's kind of where you're at with that. And if we go back and we look at, let's say, regular EQs, you're not going to see the detents where it could only, you know, it's fully variable. You could you can move that control anywhere you want to want to go. Now, what's interesting about this one is this has top shelf, a low boost, and then it has a distortion generator built into it. 
And these units have been out for 10, 15 years. So right now, the big, huge thing is distortion and harmonic generation and saturation. Thermionic cultures are some of the pioneers in that. So they call it attitude uh, on their product. So here's another version of a passive type EQ. Now, when it's passive, it means electronically it's passive. It doesn't mean you don't plug the unit into the wall and power it. It actually does have power for all your bypass and relays and, you know, if it's going through transformers, things like that, you know, your balanced input and outputs, but then the controls. So this is the same thing. This is all cuts and this is all gains. So you could gain up at 5K and you could cut at 5K and get some interesting things. And this is a left and right stereo unit. Now this you could use for mastering. You could also use it just as a regular EQ. Now here is one of their mastering EQs. And what's great about this one is these are all detents and they're half steps. So that's 0.51 and they're all matched, if you will. And then you can flip this switch up here and you can get a quarter gain for every one you're getting 0.25 dB. So you could have this at 20 dB and then I will drop it down to five. So there's a lot of cool little things that you could do with a mastering compressor. And of course, you're paying the, the price for something that has that many controls, that much uh, flexibility. It also has a cool auto bypass mode to where you could flip it on and like every three to five seconds, it turns on, turns off, turns on, turns off. Or you could bypass the whole unit with these center knobs. And then if we come to, let's say, this EQ, this is a Shelford Rupert Neve inductor EQ. Basically, it's the best of the best that everybody coveted with Neve designs, and he built it into a new version with today's components and signal noise ratios. Really nice unit. And they make that in channel strips and all sorts of things, but here is just the EQ only in a 500 module. Now, if we come over to recording, signal processing, and click on mastering, this kind of opens up a little bit of a different world because, yes, we still have our EQs, but only the higher end ones. So you got your PQ, you got your, your PASIC. Um, here's a Millennia EQ. Now, the mastering section has all the EQs, but it also has like your mastering bus compressors and things like that. So we got a thermionic culture bus compressor. But now we're starting to get into some of the more interesting things. So we have the master bus transformer, which is kind of a channel strip, if you will, for mastering, but it doesn't have a mic pre in it. So it doesn't fall as into the channel strip category. It's more of a mastering EQ compression uh, saturation device. Same thing with the bus processor. We have EQ, we have width control, we have compression, but this is a little bit more, I'll say, in the pristine realm, uh, finesse type stuff. And then we have things like tape emulation module that basically makes it sound like you're going to tape. And I believe they actually use a real tape head inside of this box. So there's probably some nano flux webbers going on, uh, even though there's no tape in here and uh, getting you that sound and saturation with some transformers also. Now, what does this mean? Well, we got these cool units that do a few of these things, but we also have what the kind of the newest and craziest is, is a harmonic saturator built into an EQ. And they also make a harmonic saturator that doesn't have EQ, it's just the saturator, but you could get some sculpting EQ out of it by how you're saturating. Now, the one thing I'll say about this is this is all the craze right now when it comes to harmonic saturation and distortion. And, you know, I see people saying, wow, this is amazing. Look at the presence that's a, that this, you know, has with just a switch of a button. It's like, well, yeah, if you used an EQ and you just flip the button, you'd get that same presence without the distortion, without the harmonic saturation that might be kind of ruining your mix. So I think people are really on this bandwagon and they're kind of just looking at a, I'll say a peripheral uh, audio you know, scope of what's going on. Like for instance, 
I could make presents with EQ and it will be pristine and I could do it with harmonic saturation and I will hear distortion in all the vocals of the mix. You know, it's fine to use this maybe on a bass or on a piano or on an organ to muddy it up or get some presence out of it, but it's adding grit. But if you're putting this on your whole mix, you might be causing some issues. And yeah, you hear it become more present, but is the depth gone? Is the resolution there? Uh, is everything distorted? That's you got to watch what your intended purpose is. So I'd be a little bit leery about hopping into this. Um, don't just follow follow the crowd like a lemming. You know, use your own judgment as you get into this. That being said, these boxes are amazing. It's just I think people are kind of missing the point and just hopping on the bandwagon, not knowing exactly what they're doing. So, um, so that's that's my little you know thing on that. And just to give you an example, let me just pop this up. So one of the original saturation distortion devices is the Culture Vulture by Thermionics and uh, Thermionic Culture. And they uh, have all these different functions, and they all sound different, like how it's hitting the tubes and the bias and all that. And you could really have this subtle, and you could have this just drive and mangle the crap out of stuff. Now, let me give you a real example uh, of a reason that I would not use something like this on a stereo bus. There was a band that I actually caught on a like HD music channel, and the band was called Mute Math. And it was a live concert, and it's kind of like this train cruising at full speed of music, crazy music. It's almost kind of progressive, but it's not. It's like It's like alternative music, but it's just the drums are going nuts and everything's going crazy. And it has this beautiful, clean voice going over the top of it. And so it kind of mellows out the train that's just like, you know, going crazy. It mellows it out with that mellow voice on top doing these beautiful melodies. Well, I've watched this concert 50, 60 times over, just blown away about how great this band is. And I was at a friend's house and they had a studio recording CD of, of the band. I'm like, man, can I borrow that? I'd love to check out, you know, what their studio album sounds like. And when I plugged it in, what I could tell that they did is they took something like the Culture Vulture or some kind of distortion box or clipped it or something and just distorted the final master across the whole CD. Like it literally had grit, like someone put it through a box. I just couldn't listen to it. Like they just ruined it for me. And here I'm listening to this amazing mix on the live concerts that is just awesome. Listen to it 60 times. And then I get the CD that has distortion on it. And I'm like, what did they do? They like threw it away at the last second. Now I understand that you have artistic preference and they, they chose to do that. That's great. I won't listen to it <laughs> because it sounds like crap to me. It just sounds like, you know, if I want to get some trash speakers and destroy them and they're all broken and they're like, <laughs> and I want to throw my music through it. Well, I'll never do that. And that's what they did to their CD. So that's my little PSA on distorting stuff. For more information on boutique gear, please go to purewaveaudio.com. And for expert education on the physics of sound, gear selection, building a studio, acoustics, and everything you ever wanted to know about selecting and recording a drum kit, check out the studioedge.com. Thank you for your support and have a great day.